folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR. At the bottom of the screen, Tenkar is there. It's tavern.com slash humble kobold. OSR, 5e PDFs, dirt cheap at Humble Bundle. Uh, if you do happen to use the link below, it's an affiliate link. You will help support the tavern. Now, on to the show. Wall Street Journal. This is bad, okay? There's nothing good. When the Wall Street Journal highlights that Hasbro to cut global workforce by 15% by layoffs or another signal of economic uncertainty across sectors. This is earlier Thursday. This is probably going to come out early Friday, the video I'm talking about. Uh, it would eliminate 15% of its global workforce this year, and the latest indication that economic uncertainty is spreading to sectors beyond technology and media. It's approximately 1,000 positions. Wow. Yep. Uh, preliminary results for the fourth quarter show that revenue declined 17% from a year earlier, and adjusted earnings ranged between $1.29 and $1.31 a share. The predicted expected revenue was $1.52 a share. So it is down. Shares dived 8.5% in after hours trading. That means. After the market closed, there was still some trading going on, and it dipped. You want to see the dip? I can show you the dip. Hold on to here. One sec. There we go. Look at that. This this gray part is the after hours trading. That's a hell of a dip because they released this after hours. Of course. You don't release negative information during the stock trading time. You want to minimize the effect. So, the 52-week low for Hasbro stock is 54.65. The high is 105.13, and it is currently trading at an even $59. Hmm. Isn't that special? But wait, there's more. Because it's not only the Wall Street Journal that's picked up on this. CNBC. CNBC article is a little bit interesting because it covers something that we will find interesting as gamers in this whole OGL controversy. So Hasbro will cut 1,000 employees, 15%. Weak holiday quarter results. Wizards of the Coast, which includes Dungeons and Dragons, will remain a bright spot, according to the company. Hasbro said we eliminate 1,000 employee positions and warned of weak holiday quarter results. That 6% drop we saw is actually at this point around 8%. Um, despite strong growth in Wizards of the Coast and digital gaming, Hasbro Pulse and our licensing business, our consumer products business underperformed in the fourth quarter. It gives the backdrop of a challenging holiday consumer environment, said Hasbro CEO Chris Cox. Uh, that 15% of, of its global workforce comes as the company seeks to save between a quarter million and $300 million annually by the end of 2025. Okay. So, let's skip ahead over here. Um, for the full year, the company foresees revenue hitting $5.86 billion, but that's down 9% compared to the prior year. These aren't good numbers. Okay. Um, but we are still confident in our Blueprint 2.0 strategy, unveiled in October, which includes a focus on fewer, bigger brands, gaming, digital, and our rapidly growing direct-to-consumer and licensing business. Direct-to-consumer is when they're going to start bundling your physical books or doing it already with your uh, D&D Beyond digital material and I'm sure the VTT. Um, here's the Wizards of the Coast part. Wizards of the Coast, which includes Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering, and digital gaming. Digital gaming is under Wizards of the Coast. What does that mean for your VTT? What does that mean for the future of d and Might be digital, right? They want to make magic more digital anyway. Um, the company expects the division to have generated $339 million in revenue during the fourth quarter, up 22% compared to last year, and reached $1.33 billion in revenue for the full year, up 3% from 2021. The division, this is where it gets interesting, folks. This is CNBC. Recently came under fire from fans after Hasbro attempted to rewrite a two-decade-old open game license 
for Dungeons and Dragons in order to boost revenue. Earlier this month, by the way, again, that's that's the honesty, right? They're not they, they were doing it to boost revenue. No other reason. Okay? Just to be clear about it. Being called by CNBC. Earlier this month, the Rhode Island-based toy maker postponed its update on its licensing terms in order to address mounting concern from the D&D community, which largely view the proposed changes as overreaching and unfair to third-party content. Hasbro said it still intends to create a new open game license, or OGL, but that will not include a royalty structure or give itself access to intellectual property made by third-party content creators. The company is set to report its fourth quarter results February 16th. So, happy Valentine's Day, folks. It's going to be an interesting, interesting time. If you don't think this affects what their plans are for d d it certainly does. The company is losing value, Hasbro. The company is uh, has shrinking revenue. And that includes Wizards pulling more than its own weight. What does that mean? Time will tell. Folks, as always... Link, link below if you want to support the uh, tavern. But as always, be safe, be well, God bless, roll those dice, roll them well. Uh, tonight, Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, a random party generator. Uh, you want some more uh, hot takes on the OGL, uh, the proposed orc license, this ongoing drama with uh, D&D? Join us at 8. Look forward to seeing you there. All right, folks, on that note, let me close this out and uh, I guess uh, get to bed. Come on. <laughs>